Men, and I use the term loosely, we're going to do a short video this week and uh, we're going to talk about setting the breather timing and the cam timing. And the reason I'm doing this is because I was perusing YouTube the other day and I ran across a guy who did a video and he was wrong. And had you done uh, the timing setup the way he suggested to do it, uh, you would have screwed it up. So uh, I'm going to just kind of set the record straight on this thing. Uh, right now, if you were to turn the engine over and look in the timing plug hole, the vertical line would be right in the middle of the window. With the vertical line right in the middle of the window, the dot should be over the notch in the sleeve. Um, you know, on a lot of these pumps, uh, Harley was not particularly precise and the dock could vary one way or the other. So what I suggest is, you know, uh, just remesh the gears in a couple of different places. Let me try to remesh the gears for you. See, that's pretty close. You know, not quite. We'll move it a tooth the other way. See, that's too far. Let's go back the first direction. Um, that's pretty close. I think that's as close as this could get. So let's flip the motor around. I'll show you the other side and you could see, you know, where we're at with it. All right, so where was I? Well, you didn't think I was here, but here I am. Uh, I was moving the uh, engine around to show you the vertical line on the flywheel and I had to change the vertical adjustment of the tripod and the camera and the goddamn thing jammed up on me and no matter how much I cussed at it it still wouldn't work so I ended up having to take the damn tripod apart and this is why making videos takes a long time sometimes well the rack gear it's got a rack and pinion so I guess this is the pinion gear <laughs> on the crank that raises and lower it uh, disintegrated so the camera was jammed so now I gotta buy a new tripod some of your patreon money will be buying me a new tripod alright so here we are back to the vertical line uh, you guys have owned these things for any length of time uh, spend a lot of time peering into this hole there's the vertical line and when I let go of the connecting rod it wants to move and this is why I do the uh, uh, oil pump breather adjustment with the engine laying on its side so I could put it where it needs to be and it'll stay put. Uh, if you got a magneto, well, if you got a, actually, if you got any of them and you want to uh, dynamically test the timing, uh, you pull that plug out, you get your strobe light, and you peer into the hole. Uh, you will be sprayed without oil. Uh, unless you got the little clear plug that goes in there. Let me show you that while we're talking about this thing. Okay, here you go. Here's the uh, clear plug that enables you to view the timing mark uh, without getting sprayed without oil. Uh, it helps if you uh, paint the, you know, drop some silver paint in the middle of that hole or in the middle of that line and then you could see it uh, through the plug with the engine running, although you got to fiddle with the angle on the strobe light to get it to illuminate it so that you could see it. All right, so anyway, we're going to uh, flip the engine back over. I'm going to lay it back on its side. With the laying on its side, I get a mirror. I get a mirror and kind of finagle it, and I can see the line so I know where it is. So anyway, let's slide back over and align the, uh, check the alignment of the uh, uh, breather. All right, so right now on this engine, the line on the flywheels is in the center of the timing hole. The dot is almost 
centered over the notch. It's a little, uh, a little on the forward side. Just play with the teeth and get it the best you can get it. I would say an acceptable range of timing is probably with no more than half of the dot hanging past either side of the notch. If you could get it within there, and you will be able to, you're, pro you're probably going to be okay. Um, I don't know why some line up exactly and why some don't line up exactly. All I could assume is Harley had sloppy tolerances back when they were building these things. Okay, the other thing I had issue with on uh, this fellow's YouTube video was uh, when it comes to putting the pinion gear on. The pinion gear is a press fit over these splines. Some engines it's very tight, some engines it's not. Uh, anyway, uh, this particular YouTube guy uh, thought the best way to get it on was to drive it on with a hammer. Well, you've just spent possibly hours truing your flywheels to within a couple of thousandths of an inch of dead nut zero. Uh, probably the last thing you want to do is beat on any of the shafts with the hammer. Um, so there's a tool, an official tool for installing these things. Uh, this is not the tool, this is the tool I made. And there are threads in here. They are 5 16 24th left-handed. The threads on this a uh, homemade pusher that I made are also 5 16 24 left hand. Um, <laughs> when I was learning how to thread on the lathe, this is one of the first gadgets I made. And being as it was left handed thread, it was more than a little bit tricky. But anyway, when I rebuild an engine, I have a 5 16 24 left handed tap that I run down in here to clean the threads up inside the shaft. And basically what goes on is this is the tool screws into the pinion shaft and this nut, so to speak, uh, pushes everything on. So well, we're going to go ahead and do that. And one of the reasons you want to do that is because right now if you were to rotate the engine around uh, in the direction of normal rotation, it will walk this gear off of the breather and throw your timing off. So since the pinion is a press fit, it locks the breather down where it needs to be. And as you would expect, there's a wide spline, so it's idiot proof. On the 77s and later, there is not a wide spline and it is not idiot proof. There is however a little mark on the shaft that you line up with the mark on the gear. Uh, I've seen guys put that together wrong more often than they want to admit. So we'll screw the tool onto the pinion shaft. It goes in about a half inch and then it locks up. And then we use the uh, flats on this nut to drive the gear onto the shaft. And when I took this one apart, I noticed it was pretty loose. I'm still going to have to use a wrench on it though. Okay, that's it. It's all the way on. You back this off, and you could take the installing tool off. That's it. That's done.
Now, at this point, it does not matter where the timing gears and the cams are. The only alignment that matters is the align on the flywheel centered in the timing plug hole and the notch and the breather sleeve. Where the gears are, where the, where the mark on the uh, pinion gear is, is irrelevant as far as the breather timing is concerned. Why do I say that, you may ask? I say that because the manual says that. Once the breather valve is correctly timed, position of the flywheel timing mark and the breather valve timing mark registered in the slot of the breather sleeve gear can be disregarded when installing the timing gears. So the cam timing has got nothing to do with the breather sleeve timing. Uh, one other thing of note, once again a picture is worth a thousand words. Vertical line in the center of the timing plug hole, dots centered over the notch in the uh, upper cover. Um, the book has a ruler over here because the face of the pinion gear is supposed to be 5 sixteenths of an inch away from the uh, mating surface of the crankcase. Uh, you will find that when you tighten the uh, pinion gear onto the shaft, when you push it onto the shaft with your tool instead of a hammer, you'll find out that when the gear is flush with the splines on the pinion shaft, uh, it will be 5 sixteenths of an inch away from the face of the crankcase. Uh, once again, the book is your friend. Use the manual. If you don't have one, get one, please. Otherwise, you're at the mercy of idiots on the internet, except for me, of course who will lead you astray with bogus folklore knowledge. All right, we're going to put the gears in. Uh, they're numbered one, two, three, four. Uh, you could always tell them apart by looking at them. The number one gear, number one cam has one timing mark. The number three has two timing marks. The number two has three timing marks and uh, this is the surface, the uh, point uh, centrifugal advance mechanism uh, mates onto. And of course the number four, excuse me, the number four right here uh, has one timing mark right here and the uh, spiral drive gear for the tack on the 1000cc motors. So you can't get them mixed up. Well you could but you'd be an idiot. I put grease on the shaft, grease on the cam, and then grease on the teeth. And we're going to fine tune that. Let me get some grease off of me. Here's the marked tooth on the pinion. All right, I've been playing with this to get you the direct overhead view. And we're going to take a look at a couple of things. I'm going to try to wipe the grease off so you can see the marks. Okay.
these two marks are lined up the pinion shaft and the number two cam this one looks like it might be off a little bit this one looks like it might be off a little bit you've got to experiment with them a little bit sometimes so we'll raise the number two cam just far enough to rotate the number one a little bit and then hopefully drop it back down without changing the mesh of the other two that looks a little better to me this one looks like it might be off a little bit still it's very hard to tell so we're going to move the number three cam counterclockwise one tooth and see what happens I think that made it better alright let's spin the motor around two times okay the pinion and the number two are aligned the number two and the number one I keep bumping the camera because it's right in my face those are pretty good these are pretty good you know Harley and I've joked about this before Harley had some drunk one-eyed guy stamp the marks on these things if you buy a set of Andrews cams or you know any of the name branded cams uh, the marks line up exactly the Harley ones you know the the bottom of a tooth on one side is supposed to line up with the top of a tooth on the other side so this is down in the valley let's see where this one is I'll pop it out of there and we'll take a look at it and you see this gear the number one the number one cam here's the mark and here's the valley well this mark should be pointing either here or here because this mark is down in a valley so no matter what you do you're going to be a half a tooth off one way or the other it, it really is irritating and it doesn't have to be that shitty and they're probably all like that let's look at the number two and the number three once again we got a mark clearly at the valley this one the mark is also more or less at the valley it's it's just an approximation um, really irritating like I said if you bought a set of Andrews cams or something like that the mark on this valley would be exactly pointing at the peak of the tooth on the opposite gear and you wouldn't be forced to play this guessing game but yeah I understand why guys have a hard time with it uh, they're not very uh, clearly stamped in my opinion so let's get these back in here see where the hell we are and the first stab is usually just that it's just a shot in the dark okay the pinion and the number two are lined up okay the number one and the number two look like they're off by a tooth mark over here mark over there we're going to move the number one one tooth clockwise I think that's better now we got the number two and the number three this is off by at least at least a couple of teeth
All right, let's spin it a revolution or two and see where we're at. This looks good, this looks good. This looks off by a tooth to me still. Looks good, looks good, looks good. So we're left with the number four. And the number four looks good. The number four is easy because there's just the two gears interacting with each other, not three gears interacting or four gears interacting with each other. And I like to spin the motor over a couple times, make sure nothing's binding, and we'll line the marks up one more time. Looks good, looks good, looks good, and looks good. That's done. Okay, the cover is ready to be put on this. So anyway, that's timing. Hopefully, you know, you could see better what's going on. It's, it's very confusing. And on this one, uh, the mark does happen to line up. But remember, it does not have to. This dot only has to line up when the line is in the window on the other side. I think I'm ready to put the cam cover on. I'll rotate the motor a couple times, make sure the marks still line up, and then we'll close it up. That's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. We're ready to ready to seal this up. Um, I don't know. Does anybody see anything I forgot? I don't know, it looks good to me, let's close it up. I always put uh, washers under the heads of the screws. If you don't, the screw just kind of saws its way in. And this particular one, uh, I counterboard all the holes so there was a nice flat bottom for the washer to seat onto. All right, that should do it. Let's make sure the motor still rotates. Nice. Done. <laughs> do any of you think I forgot the oil seal for the gear shift lever? Well, you may think that, but you'd be wrong. Uh, one of the more clever tools I think I've ever made is this guy right here. That'll fit in behind her. It's got a pilot on it that lines up with the hole. 
I've got a driver that goes through the shaft and into the hole on the back of the seal driver. And one or two good firm wax. And the seal is seated, nicely seated, without interference by the cover. I could say one of the cleverest tools I think I made. And with that, I am out of here. Uh, see you all later. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, join me on Patreon. Thank you all ever so much for watching. Bye.